Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to add an OWC solid state drive to your 2011 iMac using our DIY upgrade kit. This is an advanced process and we recommend watching the video in its entirety before attempting the upgrade. We've gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the iMac and are working on a soft static free work surface. Your iMac's original box makes a handy place to hold both the screen and the front glass while performing this upgrade. Simply reverse the styrofoam inserts so that the curved opening faces upwards on both sides. We are now ready to begin. Attach the two heavy-duty suction cups that came with your kit to the upper left and right corners of the iMac's front glass. Then, gently but firmly pull forward on the handles to separate the glass from the magnets that hold it in. You can then set the glass on the flat part of the styrofoam and lean against the box edge. At this point, you'll need to be extremely careful not to touch the screen itself, as the oil from your fingers is very difficult to remove. Next, we need to detach the display itself. To do this, we'll need to remove eight Torx T10 screws, four on the left and four on the right. As you remove each screw, you may want to grab onto it with the tweezers from the included toolkit to keep the screw from getting away. This is especially true for the ones located near the magnets such as the top screws and the ones second from the bottom. Next, gently peel the two EMI gaskets away from the screen. Then, being careful not to touch the screen itself, use one of your nylon pry tools to pull the screen forward. In the upper left corner, you'll need to disconnect the vertical sink cable. Grip the plug over the connector but underneath the tabs on the plug and gently rock it until it comes free. Next, we're going to disconnect the backlight power cable. When doing this, be careful not to touch the connectors in this area which go to the power supply and may still have some residual charge to them. Disconnect the backlight power cable by pushing down on the connector to release the retaining tab, then pulling the cable and connector downward. Moving towards the right side, lift the display power cable up and out much like you did for the vertical sink cable. Finally, detach the display port cable by first opening the handle by lifting the black plastic tab, peeling the cable away, then lifting the connection straight up and out. Keeping your hands on the outside edge of the display, you can now lift it up and out of the iMac and place it in a dust, static, and oil-free place. We recommend using the bag that covered your iMac when you first purchased it. Place the iMac's accessory container in the box we set up earlier like this. The screen in its bag can now fit in the indented section of the styrofoam inserts. Next, we need to remove the optical drive. To do this, we'll need to remove these four screws. Keep in mind that the lower left screw is slightly longer than the others. We'll also need to disconnect the optical drive's temperature sensor cable. Use your nylon pry tool or your fingernails to pull the connector out by the tabs at the top. Then, carefully extract the sensor cable from the channel. You can now remove the optical drive from the bay by tilting the inside edge toward you slightly, then sliding the drive off its retaining pins. Finally, detach the SATA cable by gently pulling the connector straight out of the drive, which you can then set aside. Next, use your Torx T10 screwdriver to loosen the screw holding the optical drive fan in place. Then, unplug the fan the same way you did the other connectors. You can now pull the fan assembly free, making sure you don't catch on the small pin in this area. Peel back the tape covering the battery and IR wires, then disconnect the IR sensor cable. Finally, lift the sensor itself up and out of the iMac. Next, we need to remove the memory. Use your Phillips screwdriver to loosen these three screws which hold the memory cover in place. To remove the memory, first unfold the black plastic tabs in the memory bays, then pull these tabs straight downwards to eject the modules.
We'll need to remove these eight screws to detach the logic board from the back of the iMac. Before we do though, plug in as many cables to the rear ports as you can. This will aid in realigning the logic board when we're done. You don't have to install all of them, but the more you have, the better. The first screw to remove is here, next to the graphics card heatsink. Next, remove this screw holding the logic board in place. Then, these two screws need to be removed. These two are shorter than the others. After that, remove this screw in the middle of the logic board. Then, you can take out this one near the left side of the board. The next screw is located in the heatsink frame and is longer than the others. The final screw is on the far left side, holding the heatsink in place. The next step is to remove the airport card from its slot. First, remove this small screw using your Torx T6 screwdriver. Then, gently remove the card from the slot and rest it in the fan vent to the left. Now we need to detach these three cables. They come out the same way as all the others. With your left hand behind the heatsink and your right hand behind the logic board, gently angle the logic board assembly forward until the heatsink on the left clears the board just above it. The SATA port we're going to connect to is located here, on the back side of the logic board. Arrange the cable that came in your DIY kit so that the thicker cable is to the left and the thinner cables are to the right as you look at the iMac. Once positioned correctly, the connector will simply slide into place. We'll need to route both of the cables through the lower channel, located here, then through the upper channel here. It's easiest to route the cables one at a time, starting with the thinner cables first. With the SATA connector facing away from you, attach the double-sided adhesive tabs to each corner. Then peel the second side off. Then, do the same with a second set of pads on the right side, on top of the previous set. This helps account for the curved surface of the back of the iMac. Attach the power and data cables you just routed to your new drive. With the pads facing the back wall of the iMac, rest the drive on this lip and gently press it into place. Adjust the positioning of the wires so the thicker data cable is behind the drive. Then, make sure both wires are routed so that the data cable is laid flat on top. Any excess cable can go into the chamber below the lower channel. Once they're all flat, you can set the thicker black cable along the others and ease the logic board back into place. When leaning the board back, there's a small piece on the IMAX frame that will catch against the left side heatsink. If you lift up slightly on the logic board, it should slide into place correctly. You can now plug in these three cables which you detached earlier. They're all different sizes, so you can't accidentally mix them up. We can now replace the logic board screws. Start with the two lower screws, which are the shortest. However, don't tighten them all the way, as we'll need some movement to align the ports correctly. Then, replace the single screw just above those two, near the optical drive fan connector. 
Take the next two middle size screws and replace them in the center and left side holes on the logic board. Then, take the longest screw and attach it through the hole in the heatsink frame. While we're here, reinsert the airport card into its slot, making sure the notch is to the left hand side. Then secure it into place with the Torx T6 screw. Next, reattach the screw next to the left heatsink. Finally, attach the one near the right heatsink. You can now move the logic board up and down slightly until the rear ports are aligned. You can tell the board is set properly when you can plug and unplug all the cables easily. Once it's set correctly, tighten all the logic board screws completely. Next, we need to replace the optical drive fan. Along with the single screw, there are two peg holes. These holes line up with these two pegs. Line up the lower peg first, then the top one, and set the fan into place. Then, plug the cable into the connector marked ODD fan. There are two pins next to the optical drive slot on the case, which line up with these two holes on the optical drive. Making sure no cables are trapped underneath, slide the two holes on the drive over the two pins, attach the SATA connector, then set the drive so that it lays flat. You can then replace the four retaining screws with the longer screw going into the lower left. Route the thermal sensor cable down this channel, then plug it into the socket marked ODD temp. Next, slide the IR sensor down over the bracket behind the Apple logo. You can then attach the cable to its socket and secure it into place with the tape you peeled back earlier. Remove the screen unit from the bag and, once again being careful not to touch the screen itself, set it into the iMac. Reattach the display power cable by simply sliding it into place. To reattach the DisplayPort connector, first make sure the handle is flipped upwards. You can then slide it into the connector, then flip the handle down to lock it into place. Reattach the backlight power cable on the lower left by simply sliding it back into place until it clicks. Then do the same with the vertical sync cable in the upper left corner. Finally, lift the two EMI gaskets forward and lean the display back so that it lays flat. Take the smallest screwdriver in the included kit and slide it through the top screw hole in the display and into the corresponding hole in the iMac. You can then use the screwdriver to lift the screen up and down. Do this to align the second screw holes and insert a screw so that the screen doesn't fall. Repeat the process on the other side. You can now replace the remaining screws and tighten them all down. Use your tweezers if the magnets make installing the screws difficult. There are four notches on the bottom of the iMac screen which line up with the four notches on the front glass. Set the glass into place as shown, but don't close it yet. Use the microfiber cloth from your kit to make sure that there's no dust trapped between the screen and the glass. You can then close the glass which will be held in place by the magnets. Remove the suction cups and wipe the front down so that it's clear of smudges. 
You can also unplug the cables from the back if you don't need them. With the iMac facing you, position the memory so that the notches are facing towards the left, then slide it into the slot it was before. Then, gently but firmly push on the module until it snaps into place. Do the same thing with any other modules. Once all the modules are installed, fold the black tab over and tuck it under the memory like before. You can now replace the bottom cover. Get the three screws started, then adjust the door as you tighten so that it closes flush. You may now hook your iMac back up, plug it in, and turn it on.